So today I am going to be talking about creating a 90 day plan for your business. Maybe you're someone who has previously planned a whole year in advance, six months in advance, or maybe you do it month to month. And I'm going to explain to you why I think a 90 day plan could be a better choice and how to actually structure that plan as well. So first of all, thanks so much for watching this video and do remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more content like this on your YouTube feed. But let's get straight into it. I want to talk today about creating a 90 day plan for your business, also known as a 90 day sprint. You can use the terms interchangeably. I've just kind of pinched the word sprint from agile methodologies. And it's basically a term that is used to describe a kind of shortish development cycle where you focus on a particular project within a set amount of time and then review it at the end as a way to stay adaptable and flexible. And that is one of the reasons why I think it could be a really good option for planning in your business. At the moment, in the current climate, we are partway through a global pandemic. Things are changing so rapidly at the moment that we have to really stay on our toes as business owners. So now more than ever, it's so important to be flexible and adaptable in your business activities and your marketing and everything like that. So previously, I was someone who would spend a whole day at the end of each year planning out the next 12 months really specifically and then reviewing and making kind of micro plans month to month. But now I think I'm getting to the point in my business where by the end of those 12 months, I'm finding that a lot of the tasks that I set for myself are no longer relevant. Maybe my priorities have changed. Maybe, maybe there's been external circumstances have changed like this crazy pandemic at the moment has kind of thrown everything up in the air. And so for me, a 12 month plan isn't really working anymore. And I would rather make something that's much in much smaller chunks so that I have more of a focus and I'm not totally overwhelmed by the sheer amount of tasks I have to complete within 12 months. If you set it in just a smaller time period, then it's less overwhelming, but it still gives you some big picture overview, which if you are someone who plans month to month, that might be something you're missing and you might be kind of flying by the seat of your pants trying to get things done, but without much focus. So before you get started putting together your 90 day plan for your business, I would always recommend going back and looking over your annual goals and your kind of overview for the year first. And just to give yourself a reminder, if you're just getting started and you haven't actually done the process of setting kind of a yearly plan and doing goals for the next 12 months, maybe this is something that you could have a look at doing either now or um, towards the end of the next 12 month period that works for your business. I have got a 2020 goal uh, planner workbook that you that is free to download on my website I will leave the link in the description below um, and that kind of takes you through the kind of proper big picture overview for your business for a whole year and I would recommend looking back at that if you have done it um, before you set up your 90 day sprint plan because then you can kind of just remind yourself what the overall vision is for the year. And if you're starting doing 90 day sprints for the first time now, and currently we are midway through 2020, we're six months of the way through, I would recommend going back and doing a six month review of your business over the last six months, whether you've done a yearly or um, annual plan and overview or not. If you're watching this in present time, six months of the way through 2020, this is a really good point to just stop and reflect over the last six months before you then move to this um, three month planning process. Another tip I would suggest when you're doing any kind of planning activity, whether that's for the year, whether that's for six months, if you like to do that, even if it's for a month, um, but particularly for this 90 day sprint, I would really recommend taking yourself outside of your normal working environment. I personally like to just change the space that I'm in and it gives way and some more room for creative thinking and you don't get distracted by um, work problems and things at your normal desk. Um, so at the moment, obviously, most of us are still in lockdown. You might not be able to just go into an office or a coffee shop right now. Um, obviously, if you're in the future, then I would recommend doing that and getting outside of your home or outside of your office completely. But if you are at home, just change rooms, go and sit at the dining room table, go and sit in your bedroom. That is what I did uh, the other day with my um, iPad and my notes there for my 90 day plan. 
and it still kind of helped me jog some creativity when I was working through the activities. So how do you structure your 90 day plan? If you are looking for something really easy, I have created a free workbook on this. It is 15 pages. You can download it and fill it out on your iPad like I did or print it out and fill it out. Um, it's got everything you need from like the uh, 90 day reflection um, and looking back at your past goals and things like that. And also setting up goals, projects, action tasks, um, which I'll be talking through in a moment, but that is completely free to download. The link will be in the description. Just go and sign up and it will be automatically delivered to your inbox. But just to give you an overview, this is what is in the workbook and also the process that I did the other day and that I would recommend. The first step is obviously to review the last 90 days. So if you have done a 90 day sprint before, you obviously want to look back at the previous 90 days. If you haven't done it before, like I said, go and have a look back at the last six months, maybe take a look back at your yearly goals. But I've made a lot of space at the beginning of this workbook for you to use it um, every 90 days. So yeah, then you can use the exact same workbook and the same questions and prompts to then analyze the goals that you set last time. There's also a space there for you to write a reminder of your kind of yearly vision and overview as well, just so that that is fresh in your mind when you're working through the other prompts. So the next step is to set a vision or a theme for the next 90 days. So what you really want to do is think about where do you want to be in terms of yourself and your business in three months time and write that down clearly what that looks like. You could also set a theme to keep you focused for the next uh, 90 days. It's kind of optional, but for example, you could set a theme of improving engagement or customer relationship building, or maybe you've got a launch that you're doing within uh, the next 90 days that you want to really focus on. And that will be your theme is all around the topic of that launch or campaign. Then, and this is an optional step, some people might think it's a bit woo woo or whatever, but I have written a space for you to write down your intentions. Now, this is very similar to affirmations, but I'm not really a fan of affirmations because they tend to be in the present tense saying things like, I am X and um, I have Y. And a lot of the time when you're saying things that are in present tense that aren't actually true, but you're trying to will yourself there. I understand the concept of doing that, but sometimes it can feel a bit like you're lying to yourself or it can feel a bit false. So I prefer the word intentions, which kind of insinuates that you're going to phrase things as future tense, like I will X or um, I can Y, which just basically sets a commitment to yourself to be that person or do that thing or cultivate a certain mindset. Um, to help you achieve the goals that you'll be setting. So the next step is to decide on your goals that you're going to set. You can just have one goal because we will be breaking that goal down into projects and then actions, or you can have up to three. I would say no more than three, otherwise you're going to really be overwhelming yourself with things to do within what is just a three month period is actually not that long. Um, but you would also be surprised of how much you can achieve within that time. So I've made space in the workbook to either write one goal, two goals or three goals. It's completely up to you. I've also made a space for you to write your why. And this is kind of the reason for you setting the goal. And I think this is really important um, for motivation and focus when you are actually doing the smaller action steps uh, towards a goal that you have in your head why that goal is actually important to your overall yearly plan to your overall business vision for the next 10 years. You really want to make that connection of why you're actually doing something because then it will motivate you more to do it. You then want to set your criteria for your goals. So this is something I don't see a lot of people doing and that is setting really specific kind of key performance indicators or, uh, or kind of numbers or criteria for actually achieving that goal. So I actually like to split it out into three groups because it gives you some more leeway um, in terms of understanding how well you can achieve something. So I've split it up into poor, okay, and excellent. So these are kind of the levels of your success of actually achieving that goal. So if one of your goals is to improve your engagement on Instagram, it's quite specific, but let's just say that's your goal. Um, what you would set for poor would be maybe 0% growth. So you haven't gone 
you know, down in gro- in growth for your engagement, your engagement hasn't gone down, that would be really bad, for example. Um, but kind of, you know, nothing bad's happened, it's not the worst thing in the world, so it's poor, you would put 0% growth is the criteria um, that fits that. Then for okay, you might put like a plus 3% growth or plus 2% growth in engagement, and that would be kind of, okay, I have achieved this goal, but you know, it could have done better, it could have done worse, that's kind of middle ground. And then you've got excellent, which you could put as plus 10%. That would be an excellent criteria of achieving your goal. So then at the end of each 90 days, you can then go back to each of your goals and look whereabouts on this scale you are in terms of how you achieved it. And this can really help you to understand a bit better what went wrong and really analyse that in more detail rather than just black and white saying, no, this didn't work, no, yes, it did. It kind of gives you more leeway on a scale, which I prefer than just setting like a blanket criteria that is just one data point. So once you have your goal or goals written down, you then want to write down up to three projects that are going to help you to achieve that goal. So getting a little bit more specific about what needs to be done in order to reach the goal that you've just set. So for example, if your goal was to, I want to improve my Instagram engagement, your projects might be one, engage with more people on comments and DMs on Instagram. Two, create more valuable content uh, for your Instagram grid posts. And three, show up on stories every single day with interactive content. So those are your three kind of projects. And within those, you're going to have different action tasks that you're going to need to write into a calendar, which is the next couple of steps. So for each project that you have written down for each goal, you then want to make a list of all the action items that you need to do to basically complete that project. And the reason why this process, this kind of funnel of goals, projects, actions is so important is because yes, you've set these goals, but at the end of the day, um, a lot of the time your goals are variable and you're not in control of them. You're not in control of the outcome, but you are in control of those projects that you're setting. And this is a concept that I heard Erin May Henry on YouTube talking about. I'll leave a link in the description below to her YouTube channel. It's great. She's always talking about planning and goals and that kind of stuff. But she did a video recently talking about how if you focus so much on variable goals that you can't control the outcome of, you're going to end up being kind of disappointed each time because you have no control over it. Whereas if you focus on the projects that are kind of related to that goal, they're completely in your control. If you want to engage more um, with people on Instagram comments and DMs, that's completely in your control to do. So that's why this funnel kind of works for your motivation and actually achieving the goals that you want to achieve. And after this, you should have a big long list of action items and tasks that you are completely in control of doing yourself and gives you real good focus about what you actually need to get done in the next three months. And then obviously what you want to do from there is just fill those tasks in in your calendar in the order that they need to be done in. Um, I've got a big wall calendar for stuff like that. You could also use Google Calendar, which I do also use. You could use some kind of project management system like Trello. It's completely up to you how you want to fill out your calendar with all these tasks. But that's essentially the way that I would recommend doing your 90 day plan. There is one more little uh, space that I left in the workbook and that is for your daily kind of 1% rule, habit, daily action task that is going to help you move towards your goal. And this concept is taken from actually a lot of different books that I've read recently about habit forming, um, particularly the 1% rule by Tommy Baker. I will list all those books and resources below, but it's basically about doing a habit or an activity every single day consistently that can with the compound effect, then help you see really powerful results um, as time goes by. So for example, for this engagement goal example, you can put something like spend 30 minutes each day commenting on posts from my target audience. That would be one kind of um, daily habit that you could write in there or show up every day on Instagram stories showing my face or direct message 20 people every single day. And if you do those actions long enough and it completely consistently and you are really disciplined in doing those actions, 
these are going to help you move towards your goal. And it's just one really simple, small thing that you can do. Even if everything else in your plan goes out the window, if you just focus on that, that can seriously help. And you don't have to write all of those. You don't have to write more than one. I would recommend just doing one and focusing on that for the next 90 days. Um, but yeah, that is a really interesting concept that I would definitely recommend you look into more in the books that I will link below. So once you've done all that, obviously 90 days will go by and then you want to do the reflection um, kind of activities that are in that workbook. Again, you'll need to just kind of write down what the goal was, make a note on where on that scale of poor, okay, or excellent you kind of ranked in terms of achieving it, and then write down the um, activities and the strategies that actually brought you that result. So what worked well, what didn't work well, make a note of those things, and then also do kind of a retrospective if you like. It's another agile term, but basically making a note of what you want to stop doing based on this analysis, what you want to do less of, what you want to keep doing, and what you want to do more of. Um, and you can kind of split that into a grid, which I've got in the workbook as well. So that's it for my 90 day planning system for your business. Again, I would highly recommend you download the free workbook that I've put together. It's 15 pages and completely free to download. And the link to that will be in the description. Don't forget to like this video as well if you did enjoy these tips and subscribe if you want more kind of business planning content on your YouTube feed. Thanks so much for watching.